Good morning. Welcome to Shepherd of the Lakes Lutheran Church, where it is our joy, as always, to share our shepherd with you, no matter who you may be. We welcome all of you who are in attendance, and we welcome the visitors who are with us today. Um, if you are visiting with us, we humbly ask you to fill out a welcome card that's in the chairs in front of you uh, with some information you're comfortable with sharing. Uh, we simply want to take the time to say thank you for being with us today. You can take those cards and place them in the offering plate as they are passed by later on in the service. Um, today, um, we are continuing um, our, our theme in these uh, Sundays after Pentecost revolving around meaningful ministry, that all of us carry out meaningful ministry because ministry is basically service. That, that, that is what it is. And today, as we go to God's Word, we see the example of how ministry should be carried out, and we find that example in our Good Shepherd. We see that in Christ, and we see the example that He sets for us is an example of compassion. Now also today in this service, we are, we are blessed uh, um, to, to be able to, to watch as, as our Lord brings into his family uh, uh, Scott Quadair Jr. Uh, he's going to be baptized this morning, brought into God's family, washed of all of his sins, and, and made God's own dear child. And we give thanks to God for the opportunity to, to witness this today. Now, um, we'll be following along. Um, your uh, folder will have the order of service outlined for you. Um, if you're following along in the blue hymnal, we're going to be begin on page 154 with the rite of baptism. Uh, we'll hop to setting two later on in the service, um, but also everything will be displayed for you on the screens this morning. We'll continue with our opening hymn, hymn 648, Dearest Jesus, We Are Here. May the Lord bless your worship this morning.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Savior Jesus Christ commanded baptism when he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. All of us are born into this world, all of us are born into this world with a deep need for baptism. From our parents we inherit a sinful nature. We are without true fear of God and true faith in God, and are condemned to eternal death. But while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He took away our sin by giving his life on the cross. In baptism, he clothes us with the robe of his righteousness and gives us a new life. We recall what baptism means for our daily lives. Baptism means that the sinful nature in us should be drowned by daily sorrow and repentance, and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As baptized children of God, we confess our sins. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit and united us to the death and resurrection of Jesus. Every day God forgives your sins, removes your guilt, and strengthens you to defeat Satan's power. His promise is for you and your children, and he will never forsake you. Your sins are forgiven, you are clothed with Christ, you are at peace with God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, and now we invite the family forward for the sacrament of baptism. The Gospel according to St. Mark. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and bless them. Scott Nicholas Waterer, Jr., I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Receive the sign of the cross on the head and, and the heart to mark, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ and crucified. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven all of your sins. 
May he strengthen you with his grace all the days of your life. Peace be with you. Your friends. Through water and the power of God's friend, your child has been brought to faith in Jesus, forgiven all his sins and assured of his eternal salvation. Jesus now calls you to come back to his word again and again so that your child will continue in this faith and live in grace all the days of his life as Jesus promises, remain in me and I will remain in you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this child has been baptized into the family of believers, the Holy Christian Church. It is our privilege and responsibility to care for the children of our congregation, to remember them in our prayers, to encourage their parents in their God-given work, and to demonstrate a Christian life. If you are willing to do so, answer, yes, and we ask God to help us. And we ask God to help us. Let us pray. We give thanks, most merciful Father, that you have received Scott as your own child and made him a member of Christ's body, the church. Now we pray, grant to him and to all your church on earth that being dead to sin, we may live to righteousness and being buried with Christ into his death, we may also share in his resurrection so that with all your saints we may inherit eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Congregation will join now in singing our song of praise, the Gloria, which is printed out for you on the folder. We'll sing those two stanzas. God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully hear our prayers. Be gracious to us in our weakness and give us strength to keep your commandments in all we say and do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We turn our attention to God's word for today, beginning with a reading from Jeremiah chapter 23. We see the kind of compassion that our Savior has in the way that he chastises his under-shepherds for not taking care of their people like they should be doing. The good shepherd sees to the care of his sheep and charges those tasked with the sheep to make sure they are taking care of them. 
Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell and will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll continue now with our Psalm of the Day, Psalm 23. Uh, this morning you'll find that psalm printed out in the red hymnal. It'll also be displayed for you on the screens. Um, we'll hear the whole psalm introduce the refrain and the tone, and then we'll join in singing it together. second reading for today is taken from Hebrews chapter 13 selected verses. Here we see what the good shepherd does through his under shepherds is to equip and to prepare his people for works of service, for meaningful ministry. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Pray for us. 
We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. I particularly urge you to pray so that I may be restored to you soon. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Let us acclaim our gospel this morning with the verse of the day and its spoken response. Alleluia. Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Alleluia. Rejoice in the Lord for his love and faithfulness. Our gospel for today is taken from Mark chapter 6, and these words will serve as our sermon text for today. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. The gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may may be be seated. At this time, we'll join in singing our hymn of the day, Jesus, Shepherd of the Sheep. We will sing the whole hymn today. We will not be having a children's message um, this morning. Mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, today for you, I'd like you to join me in this little mental exercise as we walk through Mark 6, 30 to 34 today. I'd like you to step into the text and experience it firsthand. We're going to borrow the eyes of the disciples and see what they saw. We're going to put ourselves in their place and experience what they've experienced. And it will be by doing this 
by examining very closely what we see and experience, we're going to learn all about the one who makes our meaningful ministry meaningful. It's by stepping into those shoes of the disciples that we are going to come face to face with Christ, the compassionate shepherd. And as you sit with him, as you sail along with him, as you watch and observe him, you will see that it is his compassion that shepherds us to rest and to reflect. Now, to prepare you a little bit for this mental exercise, I I, I first want you to understand that when we begin this, when we step into it, you're stepping into an emotional roller coaster. A little bit earlier in Mark, Jesus had sent, the disciples had sent you, two by two to the villages of of Jerusalem, or sorry, of, of Israel, to proclaim the gospel, to heal and to drive out demons. And that's exactly what you did. You, you did that. You proclaimed the word. You, you helped people who were in need. And now you are coming back to report to Jesus all that you have done. But as you come with good news, you are also met with tragedy. Terrible news. Because in the words prior to our reading, we hear that John the Baptist was beheaded. Your friend your co-worker, your companion, is gone. And so while you come back with success, at the same time there is this this trouble and suffering that that meets along with it. And while we've got these balancing things, Jesus gives you a moment to give this positive report to help balance out that, that tragedy. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. You think back to that man who had been crippled from birth. and You got to see the look in his eyes when he was able to walk finally for the first time. You let Jesus know all about that. You speak that, uh, you, you, you reflect on that woman who had never heard about forgiveness before. And you got to speak it to her. You got to see the gospel work that saving faith in her heart and you get so enthusiastically tell Jesus about all of this and you see in him that smile of joy and pride as you explain everything that you had done. And while you share with him all of the things you did, all of the things that kept you busy all through, for all of this time, even though you're, you're sitting in with him and explaining all of these things, you're still doing tons of work. People are coming and going over and over again, back and forth, back and forth. People coming to get more healing. People to hear more and more about God's word so that you can't even take a moment to take a bite of bread. You are continuing to busy yourself with, with ministry and with work. And your Savior knows that. Your compassionate shepherd is aware of all of the things that you've been doing. And he knows what you need right now. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. With all that has been happening, with with all of the work you've been doing with with that that terrible news of John the Baptist, the compassionate shepherd needed to do some loving shepherding and lead you to what you need, lead you to some rest. It's time to go from being an apostle, someone who is sent out to proclaim, to back to being a disciple. Someone who needs to listen and to hear from your good shepherd. And so he takes you onto the boat and you get some time with your shepherd. As he speaks to you, as he shares his word with you. And maybe in the back of your mind as you're sailing, you're you're glad for the break, but you think, man, Jesus, you've never been more popular than you are right now. We've got so much going on. There is so much work to do. 
there's so much that, that we can give to our uh, community. I've got all of this service that I need to carry out and help with my family. I've got this neighbor that I know who, who I really want to sit down with and, and talk about God with, share uh, over a, a drink with him. But yet Jesus says, no, come with me. It's time to rest. Because if all we do is work and work and work and work and work, then that's all it will become for us. That that's what it will all be about for us. If we surround ourselves only with work and work and work, then that's how we start then to define ourselves, where we start to find our identity in just in what I do, in the accomplishments that I do for Jesus, the things that I accomplish and carry out my works. We forget about the one who is at the center of it all. We forget the one who sent us, the one whose mission and work and word it really is. But on the other side, if all we do is work and work and work and work and work, that work can empty ourselves and how much harder it becomes the next day and the next day and the next day to get up and carry out the ministry that our Savior has given to us in our own personal lives. It gets even harder when that success of our work is balanced right alongside all of the suffering and the troubles that we hear, that, that we ourselves experience. And the more we empty ourselves, then the more tempted we are then to start to question, to start to doubt, to start to wonder in the ministry, to start to wonder in the one who has sent us, in the validity and the power of the word that we are given. The easier it is for our sinful nature to lead us away, the easier it is for the devil to come and whisper those things into our ears. And yet here is the compassion of your shepherd on full display. Because he comes to you. He says it's time to rest. He gives you a break. He comes to you through his word. He comes to you at home where you sit with him and read all of the wonderful blessings and promises, all about the forgiveness he has assured to you. He hits you. Even today, as maybe you are reading along and there is just that one word that he comes to you and says, yeah, this is for you. This is exactly for you and what's going on with your life. He says that even as this knucklehead up here is preaching, and there is a phrase that strikes you where he says, yes, this is exactly for you. This is what you need to hear. He comes to you in, 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 in singing, in our declaring the glories of our God, and he applies them directly to your heart. And what he gives for you, that, that rest, that refreshment, that break that he gives you, is the reminder of the kind of compassion that he displays. The kind of compassion he displayed on Scott that we just witnessed. That he's made you his. That your identity is in him, your savior, your shepherd, who took you out of darkness into his uh, eternal light, who, who gave you that full salvation, who offered his very life on the cross for you, who sanctified you, who set you apart and now sends you out to go and proclaim that wonderful message. And sometimes it, it may just be a moment, may just be a little bit, but still, he is there to provide you with that rest. And it's because he provides us with the rest that we need that now having had that rest, we can go out and carry out our own ministry reflecting the very compassion he's shown us. And it's true we only did get a little bit of time with him. A few hours at most as we sailed on that boat to get to this solitary, this desolate place that Jesus was leading us to. That rest did not last long because. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. You look from the boat and you see some of the very same faces you thought you left behind for a while having beaten you to this spot. And you start to feel the exhaustion a little bit. Feet are a little tired from walking around. Your, your whole body feels like 
I really do not want to get up right now and go and do more of this, having had this, this rest. But then you see it. You see him. You see Jesus stand up and start to walk to the crowd, and you watch his face. You watch him look out over the crowd and you know exactly that look on his face. You know what is going through his head and through his heart in that moment. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. This word is a favorite by many pastors to explain to their people how cool Greek really is. Because that word that we use for compassion, and its basic meaning says that there is just this pain in the guts. Pain in the guts for others. That's how Jesus looked out over this crowd with with this deep feeling of, of Love and care and concern for all of these people because they didn't have any good shepherds. They didn't have any. They were lost and helpless spiritually and they needed a shepherd. And so what does he do? He does the most compassionate thing that he could do. So he began teaching them many things. He brings his word to them. He brings that life-saving message to people who so desperately need to hear it. You recognize that face really well. It's a face, it's an attitude, it's that feeling that he has that that means so much to you. It is that very compassion, that same compassion that also compels you to get out of the boat too, to to stop your rest and to reflect that very compassion onto others. It is because of that very compassion that we don't let ourselves fall into the habit of getting too much rest. We don't want to hide ourselves away, become hermits that we aren't, aren't working. There is ministry to be done there. We have our service to carry out. And it may be that our body and our mind at times will tell us that, that we are too worn out to do anything. It may be that our schedule will say, no, there is no time for this. And yet, that we can reflect that very same compassion, yeah. We do go to work. We do carry out service. When it seems like we, we, we just want to get everyone to bed and taken care of, no, it is now the time to serve our children by reading God's word to them. I've had such a long day, but I know that right now the best thing I can do is go over and serve my neighbor, asking about how his day was, how he has been doing. I know I finished up with all that I was asked to do, but I know that my coworker is really struggling, and so yeah, I am going to serve him. I'm going to go and help him out. I know I've got a full week. I know I have all of these things planned and going on, but in Christ's compassion, I want to go and to serve my church. I want to go and, and, and serve my community when there are events and things going on here because that provides me with an opportunity to reach out in compassion with the gospel. We let compassion compel and move us because in serving in meaningful ministry, we are doing nothing more than being the instruments of Christ's compassion upon others. It is through us that people get to see the face and the attitude and the heart of Christ. And it's an all too familiar face to us. It's an all too familiar feeling to you and me. It is a familiar feeling of compassion. It is that compassion that causes us to act compassionately. It's familiar. Because day after day, you experience the results of Christ's compassion to you. Again, we saw that very result today with Scott Jr. Where in his compassion, he washed all of his sins away, made him his own dear child, brought him to saving faith, gives him the certain promise of everlasting life. It's the very same thing he did for you at your own baptism. 
you see that compassion, you experience the results of that compassion where day after day he announces that forgiveness to you in his word, where he tells you that his blood, by his death, all of your sins are taken away, that you are at peace with God. You experience that compassion when he gives to you his own body and blood for forgiveness, for strength to carry out your Christian life. You see that compassion in the reminder of the resurrection that he gives to you to know that there is something better for you to come, that he has achieved something for you to come. And you see the results of that in the shepherds, the under-shepherds that he sends to you, whose job it is to watch over you, to care for all of your spiritual needs. It's an all-too-familiar feeling that you're not going to stop feeling and knowing and experiencing because your compassionate shepherd is going to continue to be compassionate to you. And it's by that compassion he's displayed on you that he equips you to go out and reflect the same on others. So let's come back to the present now. Let's reflect on what you experienced as you sat, as you sailed, and as you watched. What you got to see, what you got to experience is the one who in his compassion brings you rest in his word and promises. What you experience is the one whose compassion brings you to reflect that compassion to others as you carry out your own ministry, your own service in your sanctified living. What we see all too clear here is Christ the compassionate shepherd. Amen. Please stand. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join now in confessing the true Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, Eternal Lord, give us peace as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Work in us so that we believe and live the word we have heard today. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with a love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Move us to love all ministers of the word wherever they serve. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Protect us from temptations that surround us. Give us pure hearts and minds. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Bless our land with peace and prosperity so that the gospel may be proclaimed to all. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and opened the gates of heaven. Fill us with joy over every sinner who repents 
and comes to trust in you. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Give patience and compassion to all who care for the sick and dying. Lift the eyes of the distressed to your love in Christ. And hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Gracious God, you govern and direct all things, and you love all people. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll give our thank offerings to the Lord, and while the offering is collected, we will join in singing our offering hymn.
blessed, blessed Lord. You have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart that, being strengthened and comforted by your holy words, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our closing hymn, Lord, whose love and humble service will sing stanzas one, two, and four.
Uh, once again, we give thanks to God for, for Scott Jr.'s baptism. Congratulations to the family and Lord's blessings on, uh, on your coming days. Um, there are a few announcements before I send you on your way. Um, first announcement um, is that there are still plenty of t-shirts that we ordered. You are more than welcome to take them. They are free. If you would like to, um, you are free to give a donation um, for the shirts. Uh, there is a box out there. If you want to know the price of the shirts, we're about $12. But there are still plenty of shirts for you to take. We ordered sizes small to extra large. Um, there should be some of all in there, I think. Um, um, and the reason we got them is, is to wear around, wear to all of the events that we got, got going on, cons uh, uh, an event, for example, uh, our summer carnival, which is coming up August 1st, that'll run from 4 to 7. There is a sign-up sheet there. If you'd be willing to volunteer, there are some different areas um, um, to, uh, to help out with on that event. We've got different places for people to post up, uh, people to welcome in, uh, those to our campus, all of that good stuff, set up and take down, all of that stuff. If you've got any questions about the carnival, uh, don't hesitate to, to get in touch with me. Um, and we obviously want to just offer our community a, a fun night, but we are also hoping to use that uh, to springboard people into our vacation Bible school, uh, which is for elementary ages. Um, that's going to be August 13th through 15th from 9 to 11.30. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for volunteers. We need uh, quite a few volunteers to help with the various activities going on for that day. So please uh, do check that out. Please um, consider helping us out with, with all of those events as we hopefully can, can share God's word with, with uh, those of the, the young generation. Um, one announcement that is not in the folder is something uh, that we're going to be gearing up for as a congregation. We're going to be beginning, beginning a stewardship series over the months of August, September, October, and November. Um, the theme of this series is entitled A God-Lived Life. We'll be having special Sundays in those months where we focus on, on the, the themes and ideas of stewardship as they are given to us um, in Scripture. Uh, there'll be plenty of information to come out in the next week or two as we get prepared for the launch Sunday of that stewardship program. Uh, there'll be a little bit more news about that in our voters meeting, which will be coming up following the service today. We hope all of you, especially our voters, are able to be here. We've got some important stuff to talk about, such as the loan renewal that we've got for, uh, for the building, um, as well as upcoming events here at church. Uh, those are my announcements. Um, before I send you on your way, we do have our Wells Connection. We'll see what's been going on in our church body uh, this past month. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Early childhood centers across our synod have been experiencing tremendous growth, and what a blessing that is. But with that growth comes the need for more trained early childhood staff. With a new set of resources provided by Martin Luther College, centers are able to connect their staff to the proper training that they need. First Steps Child Care Center, a ministry of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, serves children from six weeks old to preschool age. It opened in 2018 to fulfill a need to provide Lutheran early childhood education to its members and families in the community. The need for child care in our community is huge. We have calls daily still for families looking for care. We actually had to stop our wait list for about nine months and we were not adding families to that because the wait list was so large that families were gonna age out. Their children were gonna age out before a spot could even open at First Steps. With that exponential growth, quickly came the need for more staff a struggle that is shared by many early childhood centers across our synod and throughout the early childhood field in general. And with the exponential growth, we've had to add people that are just in our congregations um, into those programs and wonderful people who have a heart for Jesus, but maybe that training isn't there. 
It wasn't their plan to be here for their career. They wanted some good experience. Maybe they were um, college students and they were gonna be teaching in older grades. Maybe they were going into nursing and they, they just wanted a, a job that helped them be relatable to people, to families, to children. This situation requires early childhood directors to provide on-the-job training. So how can we meet the need for that? How can we still do what we do um, in training them to be able to share Jesus in the early childhood, but also to make them um, have the, the credentials to be able to be an effective early childhood instructor, to have the, the worldly credentials too. And the way we do that was this four-tier program. The new four-tier program, being developed by Martin Luther College, is an online set of resources that early childhood centers can use to develop their staff, both spiritually and professionally. If you've been a parent or you're a grandparent, a lot of that comes naturally. But some of it are, are rules and things that you wouldn't know if you didn't take a class or if you hadn't had prior experiences. Jesus was teaching lots and lots of people. People. We need to find a way to train our early childhood teachers to be anchored in God's Word, to be able to harvest these families for uh, a future in the grade schools, in our congregations, and ultimately to see them standing next to us in heaven. Cast out all the bread and the fish here, Sophia. And all the people ate as much as they could until all their bellies were full here, Avery. The four tiers are designed for an early childhood teacher to be able to jump into a particular level based on their needs, background, and interests. Tier 1 is a set of free online modules that covers various topics for teaching in a Wells Early Childhood Center. Tier 2 prepares teachers to become certified to teach in an early childhood center. Tier 3 is Wells Ministry Certification. And Tier 4 is an associate degree in early childhood education. And I love that I'm able to take the content that I've learned in my courses and directly apply it to my classroom right away, whether that's with the children in my lesson plans or even just talking to parents um, and interacting with them and sharing different things behaviorally or developmentally about their kids. Ultimately, the end goal of all of it is that we have our teachers in our early childhood actually have opportunities to be able to further their education, whether it is um, to bring God's word into the early childhood program or it is to actually be credentialed to the world. And it really comes down to if you are able to give the best training to your teachers, you're gonna get the best teacher um, from them. There you go. And having the best Christian teachers benefits all the little souls and their families that these teachers serve in Christ's name. Even the parents, a lot of them have been interested in either baptism for their child if they're not already baptized and coming to church at St. Matthew's. If your congregation has an early childhood center, your staff can be connected to these new resources for spiritual and professional development at mlc-wells.edu.